This video will help you to learn about computer architecture, organization and then functional components of computer. First we will see the definition of computer architecture. It is including those attributes of a system visible to a programmer. So whatever actually a programmer is required to know to program or develop an application. So what knowledge you will be having about the computer, those attributes we can refer it as computer architecture concepts. It also includes those attributes that have direct impact on the logical execution of the program. So for example, we can say that instruction set comes into the architecture and also we can say that how many number of bits will be used to represent each data type like integer, real number, characters like this. Then IO mechanisms and techniques for addressing memory also comes into computer architecture. It is an architectural design issue whether a computer will have a multiply instruction or not. So whether we have to perform the multiplication operation using multiply instruction or any other process it doesn't matter that is how the multiplication is performed inside is not a matter of computer architecture but whether multiplication instruction is there or not only is a part of computer architecture. Then we will see computer organization. It refers to the operational units and their interconnections that realize the architectural specifications. Organizational attributes include those hardware details transparent to the programmer. So when we consider as a programmer we need not know the details related to the computer organization actually. So these are hidden to the programmer. For example, control signals. So how and what type of control signals will be generated for performing a particular operation need not be aware for the programmer. Interfaces between the computer and peripherals the memory technology used. So in order to write a particular program, a programmer need not know the type of technology used in the construction of the memory. It is an organizational issue whether that instruction will be implemented by a special multiply unit or by a mechanism that makes repeated use of the add unit of the system. So as we discussed before, whether we have to include the multiply instruction in the instruction set or not in a, is an architectural issue and how to perform the multiplication is an or organizational issue. So whatever the topic we consider outside view is referred as architectural and inside view we call it as organization. Now we will discuss about the functional components of a computer. So the functional components of the computer are input unit, output unit, memory unit and CPU. CPU is a central processing unit which is divided into ALU and control unit. So this CPU will interact with all other functional components like input unit, memory and output unit. Memory will not interact directly with the input and output unit. It will interact via CPU only. So whatever the operations we need to perform that will be done in the ALU and control unit is used to generate the control signals to indicate ALU the type of operation it has to perform. Input units. These are the various kinds of inputs, input units that we can see that is mouse keyboard, joystick, light pen, touchpad, microphone, scanner, 
track ball digital camera now we'll see about memory functional component memory physical device to store programs or data any kind of programs or data whatever we do in the system will store into the memory so basically it has two fundamental types that is main memory what we call also as primary memory and then secondary memory main memory the characteristic is volatile means it loses the information when power is removed so when we close the system power will not be supplied so in such a case whatever the data is stored in main memory is lost it is the main storage of the system in secondary memory it is non volatile means the data will not be lost when power is off also and it is a secondary storage and also a mass storage that is we can store more data in secondary memory when compared to the main memory main memory it is closely connected to the processor so when compared to the secondary memory it is closely connected to the processor and then stored data are quickly and easily changed so as we can see because it is connect closely connected to the processor obviously it is uh, very easy to access the data and also change the data and it is fast in process holds the program and data that the processor is actively working with so suppose if we are working with uh, more number of jobs or processes what we say then what process is being executed by the processor that corresponding programs and data are stored in main memory it interacts with the processor millions of times per second so in a second it interacts with the processor for so many times needs constant electric power to keep its information otherwise the data will be lost obviously it is fast as we have seen in the second step itself but expensive low capacity because it is expensive we cannot afford for high capacity as we increase the capacity cost increases and works directly with the processor that is no intermediate block or a component is required in order to work with a processor for example let us consider that you are writing some story in the system so when you type something on the word document or ppt if you are preparing a presentation for a conference or something else then what you type on the screen will be stored into your main memory once it is saved then it is permanently stored into your hard disk so that is the reason what happens actually if you are typing something and in between if power is off you lost the data and if you save it it is completely or permanently saved in your hard disk so data is not lost so two different types of main memories rom and ram then secondary memory it is connected to main memory through the bus and a controller main memory is directly connected to the processor but secondary memory is connected to the main memory but not directly to the processor so bus is used to connect to the main memory stored data are easily changed but changes are slow compared to the main memory the process is simple for changing the data which is existing in the secondary memory but when compared to the main memory the process takes more time used for long term storage of programs and data so because we want to make the programs and data to be permanent and for long time to exist we need to store the data into the secondary memory and also we can store more data into this so before data and programs can be used 
they must be copied from secondary memory into main memory the processor cannot run any programs or data cannot be accessed directly from the secondary memory so first it has to copied into the main memory and then only the, it can be accessible it doesn't require any electrical electric power to keep its information if you see like cds pen drives etc they don't require any electric power to store the information it is slow in access the access time what is required for main memory is less when compared to the access time for the secondary memory it is related to the capacity of storage so as more data is being stored in the secondary memory it is slow in nature and also the technology what is being used in the construction of secondary memory makes it slow it is cheap it depends upon the technology we are using dram technology to construct this secondary memory so it is cheap but slow so because it is cheap it is affordable for going for large capacity it is not directly connected to the processor as we have seen in the very first step that it is connected to the main memory suppose let us say that you are going to play a game which is stored in the secondary memory actually it will have so many programs and data but whatever the part of the programs and data is required to play at that instance of time only that part will be copied into main memory so that is the difference between the secondary memory and the main memory some sample devices of secondary memory like disk pen drive hard disk floppy memory stick etc tape this is magnetic tape and and next functional component of a computer is output devices so we all are familiar with the output devices that is webcam different types of webcams microphone printer headphones printers monitors speakers etc then cpus of uh, various sizes companies technology central processing unit looks like this from intel company this is pentium md i7 core so all the functional components of the computer we have seen that is input devices memory output devices and cpu thank you